Hey Clay friends and fam. Today I'm gonna take you along on a little DIY for a market display. So I'm gonna take you guys along with me on the design of it, where I'm going to buy supplies and how to put it together. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope it inspires you to make a beautiful and unique market display for your own little business. I have a little list here of all the supplies that I want to get for my market display. I really need it to be easy to transport, break down, be lightweight, because a lot of the times at these markets, it's just me. And if it's really heavy or too big to fit into a car, that gets a little tiring week after week when you're doing market. So it's definitely something to keep in mind for yourself. Build a display that is beautiful, but also not a pain to set up and break down. I'm going to be using a clothing rack as a frame to hold up my signs so people know what brand they're shopping with and everything at the market. I'm gonna run to Ikea. I'll take you guys along with me. I'm also gonna go to my local plastic store and check out what kind of like acrylic boards that they have. And then we're gonna hop over to Michael's. I think I'm gonna go buy a Cricut. I don't own one and I've been wanting to have one so that I can print out some really beautiful vinyl labels with my brand on it to then adhere to those acrylic boards, which I'm gonna cut and shape into some really cute pieces and then that will pretty much be it. it should be so simple if you can't afford a Cricut or it's not in your budget right now you can also totally hand paint and be creative in that way too hand paint your sign I think if you have that talent or work slowly it would look stunning and even more unique and special than printing out labels but if you are in the market for a Cricut or want a tool to help take your business to the next level, I think a Cricut would be a very awesome investment. Not only can you make custom cards, earring cards, business cards, labels, you can also make stickers. There's just so many opportunities with investing in a Cricut and I think I've finally become sold on the idea and want to add it to my little art studio. So let's go to the store and I'll show you what I get. Okay, bye babies, love you. See you later, keep the house safe. Okay, so I lied. I'm actually going to stop at Target first. Ikea's closed right now because I am too early. So we're gonna hop into Target for like 30 minutes. I'm actually gonna just grab the stuff that I was going to get at Home Depot at Target. So what I'm going to get are shower hooks that will loop onto my rack and hook into the acrylic sign that I'm going to make. So super easy, very cheap. That's all I need and obviously coffee. And that should be enough time killed that Ikea will be open and we can go get those racks. So here you can see all of the types of shower hooks there are. I definitely recommend getting something sturdy. You can also get your clothing rack from Target too. I just decided to go the super cheap route and go to Ikea for it. You can see they're pretty inexpensive. Okay, so we're at Ikea. There's definitely a line they just opened. So I'm gonna let all those people kind of funnel in. I wanted to talk a little bit about displays. One thing to think about as you are designing your display is what people are most attracted to. And through my experience and working at various markets, people love to have things that I hide, things in threes. So instead of just having a flat looking display, create levels, textures, layers, various heights, different things for people to look at and circle around and really good clear signage. If you're having a sale, if you want people to use hand sanitizer um, to follow you, just try to make sure all those details are included in your display so people don't have to necessarily ask you. Some people get a lot of anxiety shopping and being face to face with people, especially during these times. And so the more that you can say without actually having to say it, the better. So just something to keep in mind as you're making a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing display. Try to be different and try to elevate it make sure things look streamlined and create a little interest with height layers textures shapes so yeah 
everybody's in the store, so let's go on in and get our coat racks. So I'm going with the Riga coat rack. The height is adjustable. It has wheels, so I think it's a really great okay. buy. Distracted. Look at these. These are so cool. Definitely going to grab a few of these. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, third stop. We are at Michael's picking up the cricket. Ah, I'm excited to have a cricket, but I also feel like it's such a big purchase. I normally don't spend like two, three hundred dollars on one item very often, but I know it's gonna be so worth it. So yeah, Michael's and then the plastic store. Let's get it. There are a ton of different types of plastic sheets. The prices range from about $14 up to $100. You definitely have options as far as price point goes. Okay, so I got the plastic sheet of vinyl. I got a four by four, and that was $150. I think it was an eighth of an inch thick, but I think it's well worth it. It's gonna last me a lifetime. It's gonna be really cute and clean and sturdy and all the things that I need it to be. If you want to be more on a budget, there were very thin sheets of plastic that were massive for like $14. So you can always go that route too. Might be a little bit more flimsy, but whatever can get you through and, you know, make you have a pretty market display. Okay, it doesn't look like much, but it is making my letters. You can kind of see the little cuts here for my sign. I made them super massive. Took a little bit to figure out this machine, but it was overall pretty easy. I just made an SVG file in Canva and uploaded it to the Cricut app. And now it's coming pretty easy. Okay, so I have my tools here that I'm going to be using. I've got a jigsaw, sander, my hooks and a drill, a pen as well right there. And then I got my plastic here. I kept the covering on it just so it doesn't splinter and I can write on it without getting marker or pen on the actual acrylic plastic. And then this is just a piece of styrofoam that I saved from a table that I got, which is nearly perfect. So I'm just gonna kind of trace an arch because I want this in arch shape and cut this out. You don't have to do the arch shape. That's just what I'm doing. Now I'm using a piece of styrofoam that worked really well with the desired shape that I was trying to make. If you also want to create an arch shape but don't have something like this to trace, you can wrap a piece of string around your pen and guide it along the edges in a circular shape and get a nice even curve. Now I'm just running my jigsaw along the lines that I traced. Definitely wear protective gear. I have goggles and a mask on. If you feel the need to wear gloves, definitely do so. And after that, you should have a nice art shape that will perfect. Ooh. Okay, I think I actually didn't record that. I'm so sweaty. We're having a heat wave in Portland, so. Anyways, so boom, we have an arch. I'm gonna sand the edges with a orbital sander. I just think they work a little bit better. I'm not sure what grit is on here, but I'm just gonna smooth the edges and then try and fit those final letters that I made that are stickers from the Cricut. Okay, I'm probably ridiculously sweaty at this point, <laughs> but better safe and sweaty than, I don't know, breathing in plastic. I've smoothed the edges to where I want them. You can always perfect it, go back in with a sander. This is definitely good enough for me. So I'm gonna peel off the plastic covering on it and then get my stickers on there. And then we'll have a sign. We just have to hang it up on that coat rack and then we're good to go.
So here I'm obviously laying down the vinyl lettering. Not 100% sure this is how you do it, but I was just peeling and sticking. The vinyl, one thing to know, is very thin. So it takes a little bit of finessing. So just take your time and follow the curves of the letters and it should lay out very smoothly and exactly how you want it to be. And a technique I use to try and space each letter as evenly as possible is I started from the outside and worked my way in. So you can see I start with the O and the Y and then do the F and the A and so on and so forth. That way everything laid very nicely and evenly. So I'm super happy with the way that this sign turned out. I'm gonna drill in some holes so that I can hang it. And then I will show you the completed look tomorrow at my market. I hope that this also gives you inspiration for your own signage. It's so easy to DIY stuff. I think sometimes we get in our heads about making things more complicated than they need to be. And also you don't have to make a full blown acrylic backdrop sign if you don't want to, you can use poster board, you can use those really thin sheets of plastic that I mentioned. You can use picture frames and just have your name printed and placed on the table. But I do think it's fun to put in some effort in your display, make it unique and impactful so that it draws people into your booth. And let's go ahead and look at the completed look. Here is the reveal. I absolutely love this sign. I think it is so modern, clean, and so easy to transport. I ended up spray painting the coat rack gold, and I think it just adds this elevated touch to it. I've gotten so many compliments on my sign, and I can wheel it in, wheel it out, and also use the bottom rack to hold things for extra storage. If you liked this video and want to learn more helpful tips on business, polymer clay, and DIYs. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and I will see you next time.